Samus arrives on Zevis and begins exploring the surface, looking for any sign of the Federation squad. It isn't long before she finds the corpse of a bounty hunter. In the distance, she sees a Federation ship. Samus begins running toward it as she passes another dead hunter. Seeing the body, she picks up the pace until she passes a ridge, bringing the ship into full view. But it's too late. The ship has been picked clean of anything useful, while the bodies of everyone on board are strewn about. Samus desperately looks from face to face, searching for Ellen, until she finally finds her. She's clutching her electric field device, but Ellen never got the chance to use it. Samus removes her helmet and kneels down next to her friend. I'm so sorry. I know you wanted to protect me. Everyone does, but then everyone dies. I'm meant to be alone. I'll avenge you, Ellen. I'll avenge us both. She wipes the tears from her eyes as she stands and puts her helmet back on. Solemnly, she closes Ellen's eyes before taking her dog tag. Samus then accesses Ellen's data logs. It wasn't long before the space pirates discovered their presence, but they were able to scan Zevis and locate Crade, who seems to have created a burrow in Brinstar. But looking over the scans, it's obvious that Brinstar is no longer the lush forest she once knew. Suddenly, she hears a cacophonous screeching. Looking behind her, a horde of ravenous Scree are heading toward her. She takes off running toward Brinstar, dodging the bombarding Scree, but soon reaches a cavern that she can't fit through, even after turning off the power suit. As the horde gets closer, she desperately reactivates it and tries to use the Morph Ball. It's just small enough that she can fit through, allowing her to enter the cavern. Samus uncurls from the Morph Ball as she reaches an open space. Amazed, she looks over her body, then tries again, getting used to it. It's still weird. Samus makes her way through the cavern, following the map left by the Federation. She notes how all the water has become acid, a sign of the space pirate's corruption. It's not long before she uses the Morph Ball to squeeze through another gap and finds herself in the lair of Kraid. Sensing her presence, Kraid opens its eyes and roars. Samus immediately goes on the offense, shooting its immense body, but it seems to do nothing. There's little room to move as Kraid begins throwing its claws like sickles, quickly growing them back and tossing more, making up for its limited mobility. Samus is only barely able to dodge and even the missiles she fires harmlessly bounce off its hide. Unsure of what to do, Samus hesitates just enough that it's able to grab her. Kraid begins to squeeze as Samus' visor flashes warnings of the increased pressure. In desperation, she shoots Kraid in the eyes, making it scream in pain but not release her. Seeing his open mouth, Samus unloads a volley of missiles inside of it. The explosions tear up Kraid's mouth as it finally begins to bleed. Kraid throws her against the wall in agony, but she's able to cling to it, now knowing what to do. When the massive creature looks for her again, she launches herself from the wall, firing a missile into its eyes. Kraid screeches in pain as it swipes the air blindly, but Samus is able to dodge it as she lands on his mouth and spreads it wide with her legs as power builds in her arm cannon. Springwind's death flashes in her memory as she unleashes the massive beam straight down its mouth. Kraid's eyes go wide, then becomes hazy as it collapses to the ground, dead. Samus removes her helmet, exhausted and amazed at what she's accomplished. I could do this. I can do this. Donning the helmet once more, she makes her way out of the caverns and finds herself overlooking Norfair. The once tranquil lands filled with hot springs have now become a lava-filled waste lined with space pirate outposts drawing upon the geothermal energy. Maybe there she could find Ridley. She stealthily begins taking down the space pirates, making her way into one of the outposts. There, she's able to access one of their computers and begins searching through their records. The Space Pirates' goal ever since the attacks on K2L, Zebes, and the Federation research vessels was harnessing the limitless power of the Metroids in order to attack the heart of the Federation. With their immense speed, tenacious bodies, and insatiable desire for life force energy, Metroids are near unstoppable. But controlling them was another matter. They needed a way to wrangle them after conquest was complete. Mother Brain proved to be the answer. Its immense neural network could be amplified to actually control the Metroids, at least in theory. Due to the loss of the Metroid on K2L, testing proved incomplete, but Mother Brain was still invaluable. She strengthened space pirate weaponry, could coordinate attacks, and even developed Kraid. Ridley spent years trying to find the Metroid homeworld with no success. That is, until the Federation foolishly decided to secure more for their own purposes. Ridley seized the opportunity and finally obtained enough Metroids to begin their operations, despite Ian's sacrifice cutting the hull in half. With all of their preparations over the years, it wouldn't be long until Mother Brain could fully control the Metroids. 
As Samus reads, a shadow moves behind her and red eyes open. She's barely able to react as Ridley lunges from the rafters and slams her through the nearby wall into the next room, a large training facility for the pirates. Samus is left reeling as Ridley brutally slams her repeatedly against the floor before pinning her to the wall. His tail slowly coils up and strikes out. However, she's able to just barely dodge it. Using the opportunity, she fires her power shots into his chest, causing him to lurch back. She prepares a missile, but Ridley grabs it out of the air and slams it back into her. Alarms go off in her suit as she tries to recover, but panic is taking over. Images flash before her eyes as she remembers the corpse of her father, her mother's sacrifice, the burning of K2L, Ridley impaling her, and the death of the Chozo. All caused by this monster. She screams in terror and takes off her helmet as she begins to breathe deeply. Seeing this, Ridley begins to laugh, a coarse cackle that freezes Samus in place. And here I thought a Chozo survived. Instead, it's just a child playing in armor. Pathetic. His speed is shocking as she rushes forward and grabs her by the throat before taking flight. Ridley rips through the ceiling and perches on the edge of the roof as rivers of lava flow far below. His eyes focus on hers as he tightens his grip. The suit starts to spark and hiss from the strain. It's not going to last much longer. There's only one thing Samus can do. She activates the suit's self-destruct and attempts to eject at the same time. It explodes in Ridley's face as the force flings Samus's limp body toward the lava. Ridley roars in anger as the explosion knocks him back inside the training facility, landing hard. But he's not injured, only a little charred, and absolutely livid. He quickly returns to the roof and scans the area below, but there's no sign of her. Ridley flies around the lava waste as one last search before heading to another outpost, letting out another shriek of frustration. As he leaves, Samus hangs her head in relief. The explosion may have cleared her of the lava, but she could still barely move after the fall. She only had enough energy to crawl under cover. Thankfully, the Zero Suit had protected her from any major injury, but her face is bleeding profusely, the suit is torn in places, and she's exhausted. But Samus doesn't care about any of that. Instead, she spots a piece of shrapnel from her power suit. Clutching it to her chest, she begins to cry as the sun sets behind her. <laughs> Samus wakes up the next morning to find that her injuries have mostly healed thanks to her Chozo DNA. Ignoring the dried blood on her face, she stiffly gets to her feet and notes that beyond the Zero Suit, she only has the emergency paralyzer gun to defend herself. But her only option now is escape. Ridley was far stronger than she ever could have imagined. Adam was right. She wasn't ready. But she could at least warn the Federation of the Pirates' plans for the Metroids. She'd have to steal a ship. Samus carefully makes her way into an outpost built into the side of a mountain. Using the air ducts, she manages to sidestep most of the pirates until she finds a massive metal door. Thinking it's the ship hangar, she uses the paralyzer on the nearby pirate and opens it just enough for her to squeeze through. She quickly closes it behind her as the pirate regains consciousness and sounds the alarm. But Samus hasn't found the hangar. Instead, it's the remains of a massive Chozo mural. As she looks at it, memories come flooding back of a time shortly after the Chozo rescued her, back when the pain was so fresh and she refused to talk. But the Elder always kept his patience and one day brought her to this room. The mural within depicted some of the history of the Chozo, their time exploring space, and developing new technology. The center of the mural was solely dedicated to a massive Chozo in a unique power suit. The Elder had explained that this was the Varia suit, a more powerful version of the power suit that a legendary warrior was someday said to use. But with so few of them left, it seemed as if it was little more than a myth. The Elder had broken down as he recounted their history. Tears streamed from his tired eyes as he told her something that never stuck with her until now. We are never truly alone, Samus. We could be cut away from our friends and family. They could be ripped away from us in truly awful ways. And a life can appear utterly hopeless. But if we remember them, hold them close to our hearts, then they will always be with us, and we'll be all the stronger for it. Samus sees a faint image of her younger self bending down at a corner of the mural, carving figures into it. She kneels down as the image disappears and wipes away the dust. There, she finds what she had carved all those years ago. Herself, 
her parents, and the three Chozo. A tear trickles down her face as Samus caresses her old carving. But the moment is interrupted as the space pirates begin prying open the large door. Samus rises to her feet, wiping her eyes, and staring intently at the depiction of the Varia suit. She was trapped here, but she wouldn't go down without a fight. Hardening her eyes, she points the paralyzer at the door. But as it's thrown open, a brilliant white light fills the room as the mural crumbles around her. The pirates shield their eyes, but Samus is unaffected. She watches as the Varia suit emerges from behind the rubble, and when she gingerly touches it, the suit reforms around her. A warmth fills her as the power of the Varia suit is unleashed. As the light fades, her power shots rip through the space pirates. They can barely react as she easily takes them all out, except for one. She throws the survivor against the wall and points her arm cannon at it. Where's Ridley? The pirate can only sputter the words out. Turian, the underground laboratory. A lift was nearby that would take her to it. Without a word, Samus tosses the pirate aside and soon finds the lift. She had never been in these depths before, but she had to end this. As the lift comes to a stop, she's greeted by near total darkness. She readies her arm cannon, looking around, when suddenly a Metroid lunges at her from the dark. Samus dodges out of the way and tries to shoot it, but even the Varia suit's extra power does nothing. Of course. Ice. Damn it. She begins running through the facility, dodging the Metroid's lunges, until coming across a containment room. This is where the pirates were keeping them, and they had freeze guns on standby just in case. She dodges its attack once more before grabbing one of the guns and freezing it. However, it doesn't look like it will stay frozen for even a few seconds. Thinking quickly, she dismantles the gun and begins searching for its icy core. She finds it, plugs it into her arm cannon, and obtains the ice beam. The suit begins processing its new power as the Metroid thaws and immediately latches onto the back of Samus' head. Samus falls to her knees, feeling the instantaneous strain of her energy. Summoning her remaining strength, she rips it off and backs away. It shrieks in anger and lunges for her, but she greets it with an ice beam. As it falls to the ground, fully frozen this time, she finishes it off with a missile. Samus breathes deeply, trying to recover from the odd feeling of having her energy literally sucked out of her, when a voice echoes through the room. Samus Aran, daughter of Rodney and Virginia Aran, researchers who studied Chozo technology and developed a prototype neural network that was designed to exceed everything the Galactic Federation had developed until that point. The ones who gave me life, yet plan to abandon me. Samus readies her arm cannon, looking around the room when a nearby door opens. She cautiously heads through it and is greeted by Mother Brain, now looking more like her traditional form, with spikes in her membrane and a thick mass of wires beneath her brain casing. Samus is taken aback at the sight, but keeps her cannon trained on Mother Brain. The Aurora program was meant to be purely mechanical. But my biology was needed to properly process all the information. Only a Chozo brain could decipher Chozo history effectively and make it viable for the Galactic Federation. Of course, once that was finished, what use am I? I would be left utterly alone, disposed of as trash. It was all so clear to me when Ridley attacked K2L. My purpose was so much greater. Samus shakes her head as she listens to Mother Brain's speech. You can't help the pirates! They killed everyone on K2L! I know you wouldn't have been left alone. The Aurora units would have been a family. You could have communicated with them! Or even billions of people could have benefited from the network you established! Bubbles rise in Mother Brain's jar as she laughs. <laughs> You think any of those creatures are worthy of me? I am far greater than any life form in this universe. I am Chozo, and I was given a new purpose. I will lead the space pirates to an era of untold glory. At these words, Ridley slithers from the ceiling and perches on Mother Brain's casing. He bares his teeth in what might be considered a smile as the dozen remaining Metroids form up around him. Mother Brain had already obtained complete control. Samus is barely able to ready herself as the Metroids lunge at her. She fires the ice beam while dodging to the side, but is immediately caught by Ridley. Before he can do anything, Samus begins unloading missiles into his chest, the force loosening his grip and separating them. 
She only just recovers as another Metroid lunges for her head. She dodges using the Morph Ball, unfurls, freezes it, and shatters it against the ground. Samus attempts to keep track of the others, but Ridley has returned to his feet. His tail darts toward her, which she only just deflects using her arm cannon. She spins around and uses the momentum to punch Ridley. The force is enough to knock him back, surprised that anyone would dare hit him like that. But as he recovers, Samus freezes another Metroid and swings it around toward Ridley's face, shattering the Metroid and knocking Ridley to the ground. Two Metroids then try to sweep her legs, but she backflips over them before freezing both. Samus unloads her missiles, destroying them, but is suddenly ambushed from behind by the rest. Samus feels the energy draining from her body as the various suit's display flashes red, but she can't move, despite all of her struggles. In desperation, Samus turns off the various suit, giving her just enough room to escape as the Metroids hesitate, momentarily confused. As she tries to reform the suit, a claw suddenly grabs her by the head. Samus only sees a glimmer of his crazed eyes as he throws her body into the nearby wall. Her vision goes blurry as he lunges at her with his tail, but she's cognizant enough to redon the various suit. Ridley's tail rips through her armor, revealing the Zero suit beneath. Samus goes to shoot him in response, but his feral rage has made him faster. He catches her arm with one hand before grabbing her again by the head and grinding her against the wall until sparks are showered everywhere. He finally throws her to the floor near Mother Brain's casing, his tail ready to finish her off. But Samus is just barely able to retreat into her morph ball as Ridley's tail lashes out. She moves back and uncurls, unleashing a charged ice beam into Ridley's face. He screeches in anger as he tries to thaw his snout, rubbing it harshly against the metal floor. It's then that Samus sees all the wires and cords leading to Mother Brain's container. Without a second thought, Samus unloads the rest of her missiles into them, causing fluid and electricity to pour out. Mother Brain can only scream pitifully as her container goes dark and her body turns gray and lifeless. Struggling to her feet, Samus is met by a claw strike from Ridley, causing her to hurtle into the wall on the opposite side of the room. Samus lurches over from the impact and looks up to see Ridley standing above her. His tail impales her armor, embedding itself in her right shoulder. She winces in pain as he removes it and readies another strike. In defiance, she raises her arm cannon to greet him, causing his tail to become embedded in the barrel. Samus musters all of her strength to hold him in place before noticing something behind him. You wanted the Metroids, Ridley. You can have them. Ridley finally rips his tail free and goes to strike when the first Metroid latches onto his back. He tries to reach it and rip it off, but another attacks his face. Soon, all eight of the remaining Metroids cover his body. Every time he's able to remove one, another attacks and keeps him off kilter. With one final screech, his eyes go black and he falls to the ground. Samus slumps to the floor as they feed, exhausted, but ready for what she knows comes next. Sure enough, the Metroids begin to move towards Samus. Just as they're about to attack, she unleashes the Ice Beam into each one. Silently, she smashes them all, taking the time to recover her stamina and heal from her stab wounds. As she staggers back into the pirate's operation room, the lights begin to flash red. Every monitor shows a countdown. In one last desperate act, Mother Brain had activated the base's self-destruct sequence. Ignoring her pain, Samus runs toward the exit as everything around her begins to spark and explode. It isn't long until she finds the lift out of Torian and back onto the surface, but the planet looks like a literal hellscape. The ground beneath her shakes and rumbles as the lava flows begin bursting into the air. She needed to get out of here. Scanning the area, she spots a lone space pirate ship and heads for it, dodging the exploding lava and falling rocks. Samus throws herself into the ship and turns on the launch sequence. It rumbles to life as a space pirate pulls at the door in panic, but she ignores him and takes off into space, watching his body eventually fall into the massive explosion of the pirate's base. Bruised, battered, bleeding, but alive, Samus removes the Varia suit and puts in a call to Adam. He's confused at first, but softens as he sees Samus's face. Breathing a sigh of relief, he sits back in his chair and tells her that Federation scouts have already reported the explosion on Zebus. He thought she was dead. Samus is exhausted as she says, The pirates killed Ellen. But I stopped them. The Metroids are destroyed. And so is Mother Brain. Mission accomplished. Adam begs her to come back to the Federation for treatment where he's sure she'll be hailed as a hero, but Samus refuses. 
If I hadn't come here, what would have happened? I can't take their rules anymore. Your friendship means more to me than ever, Adam. But I can't ignore someone that needs help. And I refuse to be protected by anyone else. No one else is dying because of me. You might think I'm alone. But I'm not. She turns off Adam's communication and sits quietly, staring at the stars and the planet Zebus. She nods her head slightly before plugging in coordinates and making the jump into space.